<laughs> little technical difficulty, but we are live. Hey guys, happy Monday. Hopefully everything is going fantastic. I didn't get a chance to go through a few last minute settings before we got rolling. And there we go. We got a phantom window. Killed it. Little last minute, guys. Sorry, we're a little late, but I think we're in good shape. Welcome back to another Tech Live Monday night where we go over all kinds of things from the tech world, you name it, everything goes here, but tonight we have a special guest and I will cue him up momentarily as soon as I verify a couple more settings. Uh, this is a little tricky when I'm doing uh, bringing a guest in, it just makes it a little bit trickier. Ah, uh, Glitch says we're 5x5. Five five. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. We should be in good shape. Big week. Happy Pi Day. Huge announcements. New Raspberry Pi today for the tech world. Some SpaceX stuff the last few days. It's been a crazy week in tech. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic start to your week. I know I did. Things are uh, off to a rocking start. And this is where I really wish... I had someone in the background just going over some of these settings and last minute stuff. But hey, we've got to just make do with what we have. With any luck, we should be good to go. I'm just going to queue up. Yeah, we're good. Awesome. Sorry about that kind of fumbly start, guys, but we're back in business. There we go. We are that's not the right button. <laughs> tonight we have a guest speaker. We have James the Hacksmith joining us tonight. Uh, many, many, many of you will be familiar with him. If you aren't, he is the guy that created the exoskeleton in his uh, on his YouTube channel, uh, Backyard Project, that's kind of spiraled into popularity, uh, especially lately. This is a screenshot of one of his crazy popular videos, 1.5 million views. This is where he curls the 170 pound barbell using the exoskeleton he created. Unbelievable. You can find him at that, the Hacksmith recently. There was a lot of media coverage and I was really happy to see it. Uh, he has now done legs for his exoskeleton and he's gone so far. He started with a, an Austin Mini and then lifted a truck on live media, mainstream media. Unbelievable stuff to the point where Robert Downey Jr. even called him out. Make a flying version and I am sold. Unbelievable. Just crazy stuff. Last year, you may have caught that I did a uh, shop tour with with him. Uh, got to check out Hacksmith Industries. It was a fun time. You can find the video on the channel. And without further ado, we're going to go ahead and see if we can bring him in live here. With any luck, my technical difficulties are gone, and we should have you. Hacksmith, are you there? Hey, Eric. Good day, sir. Welcome to the show. How are you tonight? I am fantastic. And yourself? I'm not doing too bad. Well, many of the viewers here are quite familiar with your projects, I'm sure, but I'll let you give a little introduction in case you they are not. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm the Hacksmith. Uh, my real name's James. And uh, a few months ago, I actually quit my full-time job as a product developer to work full-time uh, as a YouTuber and inventor. So I work on lots of crazy projects and um, it's pretty awesome. Full time now, no day job anymore? Nope. <laughs> that is commitment. That's got to be slightly frightening. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick up the uh, odd contract here and there. Oh, very good. What was it, before we even go too deep, what was it like to have Robert Downey Jr. call you out on social media? That was pretty awesome. Um, uh, one, of my, one of my subscribers actually um, let me know, and I, I couldn't really believe it. I headed over to his Facebook page. I'm like, no, really? And uh, sure enough, he had shared the, uh, the EXO project. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 
So we brought James in tonight to give us a little bit of a, an update on his current builds and what he's up to at Hacksmith Industries, which is actually based not far from me in southwestern Ontario. What did you have in store for us tonight? <laughs> so over the past few weeks, um, thanks to Robert Downey Jr.'s comment, um, we've actually been able to secure a bit of a sponsorship to do some uh, bigger projects. And that includes a uh, actual flying project because he, he challenged me to make it fly. So that's also part of our 100,000 subscriber uh, milestone goal. And what we're planning on doing is um, doing a flight test similar to the very first movie right here in the shop. And um, it's going to be pretty awesome. That is unbelievable. How does one even begin to get started on that project? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a lot simpler than you than you would think. Um, safety is going to be a uh, pretty big concern, so we're gonna we're gonna focus on getting a, a bit of safety equipment before we start doing the tests. But um, there there will be rocket fuel, and uh, as you can imagine, that near person can't be the safest thing to do. But uh, I, I'm pretty confident we can do it. Very very cool. That is beyond cool. And rocket fuel. Can't go wrong with that. Kind of kind of weird seeing the uh, good 10 second lag on the, the stream. Yeah, sorry about that. So those watching, James can't see me live because uh, unfortunately Windows uh, steals the use of my webcam. So he's forced to watch us with a little delay. <laughs> he's seeing it real time with you guys, which is about 10, 15 seconds behind. All right, we, we are back in business. Small network hiccup, but we're back. Go ahead and show us around, James. Sure. <laughs> so up here is a soldering workstation. And then on the other side, we have uh, my prized piece of machinery. It's a CNC laser cutter that we uh, imported from China a few years ago, and we've been using it to make all kinds of stuff. I was actually just using it just now to work on a um, grappling hook dissension hook. So basically what you can do is you can attach this onto something, and then when you pull, it tightens. That's neat. So basically, if you, go, you can go rappelling with this, and as soon as you get to the bomb and you let go of the rope, it'll open and fall back down. So um, that's a little prototype of something we're working on for the big uh, Batman versus Superman release. <laughs> will people so, see that on your channel in the near future? Uh, they will. Very cool. Then we've also got a uh, it's my old 3D printer. It's just a solid doodle too. Still works. <laughs> Bit rusty. And then if we look out to the shop, you can see the uh, Mini Cooper I picked up. We're still working on that. And then laser engraved map of Middle Earth. <laughs> Very cool. Nest thermostat, of course. Are you still doing custom laser engraving? Yep. Yeah, so... Uh, to help support the YouTube, uh, I've got a, a, a business called Stuff Lasered where I engrave pretty much anything. And then uh, we're in the office now, so this is where all the videos are edited. We've got a nice little fireplace to keep us warm. It's a preview monitor on the wall. And then we've got the lounge area over here. And it's working on. Another part of the grappling hook design, this is actually the uh, the part you'll hold, and um, we're going to be using uh, Kevlar rope. Uh, it's only like a mil millimeter and a half in diameter, but it's got a tensile strength of a thousand pounds. So, I'm going to grab a piece. This stuff. This, this stuff can take a thousand pound load. So, perfect for a grappling hook. 
this is the main welding area. We got a nice big 4x8 steel table. Uh, metal metal rack over there. Got tons of scrap. Every time I go to the metal supermarket, I just pick up a box full of random pieces because you never know what you might need. Where's the metal supermarket? Well, there's quite a few. There's one in uh, Kitchener. There's one in Toronto, London. It's actually uh, an American um, chain, and uh, it's the be the best place to buy um, small pieces of metal. Because if you if you try buying it from Home Depot or something, you're gonna pay it's way too much for it. It's ridiculous. That's why I ask. All we have is a Canada Steel in my area, and you've got to basically buy a massive quantity that you're stuck with for an obscene amount of money. Yeah, that's the great part about metal supermarkets. They have no minimums. You can buy five dollars of steel if you want. You can ask them to cut off two inches from a twenty-four foot piece, and they'll do it for you. Anyways, uh, we also have uh, the little shop kitchen. The uh, George Foreman, microwave, <laughs> toaster oven, refrigerator. Got a water cooler down here. Pretty much uh, everything we need to uh, stay in the shop indefinitely. And then this is our latest tool. Picked up a nice King Canada milling machine. That's amazing. That was, yeah, we... We found this on Kijiji, got a great deal on it, paid $1,000, and included all the tooling, too, which included this huge box with tons of giant fly cutters. It's got to be a few thousand dollars worth of tools alone. A few. I'd put it at many. <laughs> I saw the yeah. video on that, and I was just, I shook my head. How do you keep getting these amazing deals? Just, you just got to keep watching Kijiji. Good for you. That's amazing. Um, some of the renos we've been doing. This is our bathroom in progress. And as you can see, she uh, went a bit nuts the laser engraver and uh, put some custom ceiling tiles in. <laughs> uh, we got a urinal. Planning on getting a incineration toilet or a composting toilet because we don't have a sewage hookup. A little space behind the uh, uh, stairs. Uh, we do have running water to the shop. We just haven't gotten it back to this area yet. Um, but that'll be a project for the spring. And, of course, we've got some Iron Man-themed cabinets. Nice. <laughs> I don't remember those when I was there. Yeah, so these came with the shop. They were somewhere else, but they looked, they looked terrible because the paint was all peeling and whatnot. And it was kind of funny. My friend suggested as a joke that we paint them red and gold. And then I painted them red and gold. <laughs> Perfect. And they actually they look they look a lot better than they did. For sure. Uh, what else we got? So, uh, something new since the last time you were here, we built a second mezzanine. I saw that on the most oh. recent video. It looks like one heck of a setup now. Yeah. So we've got makeshift ladder slash part of the actual uh, structure but we might put in some kind of uh, actual ladder or trap door or something we've got quite a bit of space up here for storage as you can see and then we've got our furnace keeping the shop nice and warm can really do some duct work at some point right now it just blows across the ceiling but it does the trick we got a fan in the middle that kind of pulls it down and yeah I couldn't. I, I, I've got to point it out. When I was there at uh, at James's shop several several months back, when the the first mezzanine was still under construction and lacking handrails, do you remember what you called it? The the Darwin area, I believe. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Is this Pretty the what? the Darwin area 2.0 for now? Yeah. So. The plan with this mezzanine is more for storage. It's not really a common use area. That's why it's a ladder to get up. We will be putting some handrails in, though. <laughs> but until then, you kind of have to monkey your way around. And, yeah. I think that about sums it up for uh, shop updates. Fantastic progress. The my two cents the shop was coming along amazing when i was there last time and you've really stepped it up i think all the uh the makers and inventors watching would would truly uh be quite content to have half the shop you do now 
It's quite the space. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> Fantastic. The your recent project with the the new legs for the exoskeleton. I was I have to ask, what was your kind of biggest stumbling block on that because you had a highly accelerated timeline on that build <laughs> for anyone who didn't follow uh, that was you really pulled one out of your hat on that one that was really well done in a short period of time any thought any comments on stumbling blocks or things that maybe didn't go to plan <laughs> So uh, basically what happened with that was we kind of procrastinated a bit too much and then uh, we realized, ah, crap, the, uh, the German TV crew is coming in two weeks. We better finish this. And uh, I got a bunch of my friends together and we pretty much worked for a good week straight and um, were really able to put it together. I've had the, uh, the idea for the design in my head for a while, so that helped. It was just a matter of figuring out how to actually fabricate it. And we were able to do it pretty quickly. And that's that's what I love about working with steel and being able to weld parts together. You can really, you can take an idea from paper to a physical object really quickly using steel and welding. <laughs> and if there's a mistake made, the welder can re-add that material. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I miss my days working with metal. It was... Uh, I can, I'll be honest for my viewers know, but I can't work with wood because it's it, it's very unforgiving, but I can work with metal anytime. Ten years in the oh, automotive I trade. I prefer metal. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I mean, you can do a lot with wood glue, but it's not instant. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. <laughs> Plans for uh, upcoming changes to the leg project? Yeah, so there's quite a few things that we realized when we were throwing together so quickly of stuff that we could have done better. And uh, part of that was the, the way the ankles actually mount. We found we didn't quite have enough mobility forwards and more than enough mobility backwards. So we need to adjust it to um, basically go more forwards than it does backwards and have a more uh, robust connection. So... What we're planning with that is some uh, industrial locking pins, uh, the kind with a little uh, spring-loaded ball bearing, and that way it's still it's very modular and you can plug it in, but then it's not going anywhere. Very cool. Any plan? Uh, are you staying with pneumatics versus maybe moving over to hydraulics? What's the plan? Um, sticking with pneumatics for this version, um, as the channel continues to grow, I really do hope I'll be able to do a hydraulic exoskeleton in the future. Um, possibly the power loader from the Alien movie, but as you can imagine, that would be a pretty expensive project, so um, got to pay the bills first. <laughs> <laughs> How can people support you in your projects? Uh, so I do have a Patreon page, um, but some of the bigger projects I am trying to get uh, commercial sponsorships for, and uh, we're in talks with a few companies, which is sounding pretty promising to allow us to do some really cool stuff. And the, the dream is to get this YouTube channel self-sustaining and be able to continue doing um, big projects like this. Very, very cool. Uh, Liam in the chat asks, how long do the batteries in the suit last? <laughs> um, so that part of the suit isn't anywhere near complete. Um, basically, it was just a small lead-acid battery just for the test. Uh, the plan is to get a good, uh, probably about a 10-kilowatt our uh, lithium ion battery on there and then hopefully you'll have a runtime of at least half an hour to an hour but the main point of the exoskeleton will be to um, have it in a mobile mode that does not use any power so basically you only you're only using electricity when you're using the strength mode so it's not powered at all times and with that it will last a lot longer because you don't have to be continually using the power Am I right in saying you're still using basically the first proto power pack system that you more or less started with? Um, kind of. Uh, I, I built it for Mark III <laughs> exoskeleton. <laughs> um, 
but it, it just it basically just needs a lithium ion battery pack and then that will be just about it um, there's a few other comments here uh, David Watts 100,000 subscribers. Yeah, so for when we crack 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, which will hopefully be in the next two or three weeks, we'll see, um, we're going to recreate the flight scene from the first Iron Man movie. Wow. <laughs> How are you going to attempt that? Or is this very secret? Um, I'm keeping it a bit under wraps for now, partially just because I want it to be a surprise. And two, because it's terribly unsafe, and I don't really want to give anyone any bad ideas. <laughs> well, you heard it here first, folks. Good question, David. Do you want to take a couple more questions from the chat? I see there was a bunch. Sure, I'm just uh, looking through them. I think there was one asking, how much could the suit lift? So the legs of the current suit, um, at max pressure can do about 1,600 to 2,000 pounds. So, quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and the upper upper torso, the arms? Uh, it could curl about uh, 250 pounds unassisted. Wow. So then if you augment normal human strength, you get a bit more. Very cool. And that, that's one of the other major plans for suits going forwards is really... Um, creating a more mechanical based suit that actually just augments the human body so basically um, using mechanical advantage to allow you to do lift bigger things and stuff like that amazing project uh, I thought I caught I missed I couldn't keep up on the chat myself do we even want to take how much money do you make on YouTube? <laughs> this is a common question that a lot of big YouTubers get. How, how do you deal with that one? Uh, honestly, I, I make about two, three hundred dollars a month. And uh, to give you some perspective, the shop expenses are about three thousand dollars a month. So as you can see, it's really not sustainable at this point. Even the channel grows 10 times it's going to be tight so i have to pick up extra jobs on the side and do all kinds of other stuff to uh, keep this thing rolling absolutely i don't know whether it came through on the video you guys can check out my video when i did the shop tour but james's shop is massive this is a very it's a large building for for uh, a small shop it is not small at all and the utility and the overhead of that thing that I'm glad you're paying it, not me. <laughs> Luckily, it's been a pretty mild winter, so we haven't had to run the furnace too much. But uh, it's basically like having a second house and paying for the electricity and the gas usage for uh, a second building. 2,000 Cookies asked, is the spine component going to move or is it going to be rigid? It will move. Uh, it'll be restricted um, to basically bending forwards only. I mean, the human spine can go a bit backwards, but we obviously don't want to do that at all if you're carrying any kind of load. So basically, um, it will have mechanical joints in the back to allow it to bend forwards, and there will hopefully um, be some sort of actuator there to allow you to kind of do a deadlift and kind of stuff like that. So you're going to have, you're, you're planning possibly to have actual actuators in like the between the torso and the lower like where the pelvis would be did i yep very cool so this will be extremely mimicking the normal human body except outside yeah pretty much and then uh the ball joint the uh basically the uh the universal adapter for the uh the ratchet joint which i use in the ankles and i'll be using in the hips if you just plug all those in you actually end up with a very robust uh, mechanical spine unbelievable it's a i was a, i'll be honest i was blown away when i saw the u-joint used as uh as one of the joints it just it was one of those things where i just kind of face palm more or less why didn't more people think of that i i used those particular u-joints on my impact guns for years and it just it makes yeah. so much sense it's also the most cost effective way of uh prototyping something like that because you can take advantage of um mass production basically 
And that's something I really believe in with all my designs is innovate um, existing components as opposed to building from scratch just because the cost of going to the machine shop and having something like that made, you'd be looking at hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Yes. So it would be really hard to uh, afford the project at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked, will there be armor? Uh, yeah. So um, funny you should ask. Uh, just last weekend, I actually um, got my PAL, so my personal arms license. So uh, I got that with the uh, intention to eventually uh, test some armor plating with the exoskeleton. So we can expect <laughs> to see bullets fired at objects before too long. That's the plan. <laughs> very cool. Another one I saw in the chat, I'm very interested myself, will there be EMG or electromuscular control? Yeah. Uh, um, so I've been meaning to play around with that tech. It's... Um, I, th I think you've used it before, haven't you? I have, indeed. Yeah, um, and it's relatively uh, simple. The, the challenging part would be doing any kind of more positional control, Yeah. but since I'm working with pneumatics anyways, it's really an on or off thing anyways. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I've, I, I will be using that for um, once it's all together, but I'm probably not going to focus on that until the mechanical portion is uh, done. That's totally understandable and probably a really good plan. Maybe I can help out someday with that. Yeah, that'd be great. Very cool. Uh, ben Conrad asked, have you used uh, thought of pneumatic muscles? Um, I have played around with them. Um, the only reason I haven't really shown them any more since I did was um, while they are strong, they're not lifting cars strong. No. And... Um, I've been best known on YouTube for making an exoskeleton that can do uh, superhuman feats of strength, so one with pneumatic muscles wouldn't be quite as impressive, um, but I definitely do plan on building one at some point. It's just right now I'm trying to gain popularity with the pneumatics because you are able to do superhuman feats of strength. Absolutely. Might be able to use those downrange as, as a trimming option, like a really small, like, core control or something perhaps yeah and the other thing is if you if you bundle the whole bunch together you could probably get um pretty uh strong forces i actually i picked up some fiberglass not fiberglass um yeah fiberglass mesh um uh, wire wrapping which mm -hmm. is the casing you can use for pneumatic muscles and um it's quite a bit stronger than the nylon stuff, so I might be able to pump a bit more pressure into the uh, the medical tubing and, and get them to have more strength. The, the other challenge is um, getting the, the um, contraction distance right, because basically you need to make a pretty long muscle to be able to contract a certain distance. Um, so making a full suit of those be uh, <laughs> quite might, a bit of trial and error. Might be tricky. Uh, so the Hacksmith team is probably about um, probably a core of three to five people right now. Um, so I have uh, a few friends helping out kind of as apprentices. They've, I've been teaching them how to uh, do some metal working, some welding, grinding, cutting, and whatnot. And then there's me, there's Ian. You saw him on the couch earlier. He's actually about to take the plunge and quit his job as well to join me full-time, which is going to be awesome having another full-time engineer designing things and we're going to try and do some really big projects once he comes aboard and um, then I've got another friend who's been helping with the video um, video uh, editing and filming of the projects which is awesome because it takes some some time out of my busy schedule so I can focus more on doing the projects absolutely Zach asked earlier whether there'd be any 3d printing involved in the project um, not currently, maybe in a future one. Uh, there's something I've been meaning to play around with with 3D printing is you can actually do um, electroplating on uh, 3D printed parts and you can get some pretty impressive strength um, out of those parts, which means hypothetically if I, if I designed and built one, it could be 3D printed and then electroplated and have enough strength to actually do something, which would be really awesome. And uh, 
I first saw that technology last year when I was at a 3D printing conference in uh, Florida, and they had an example of a big part that they had electroplated, and it was actually a uh, propeller from a speedboat, and it was a 3D printed propeller, and then they electro electroplated it, and it probably weighed less than a pound, and was used with like a 20 or 30 horsepower engine, wow. and it actually this boat around and that that's when i saw it. i'm like holy crap if i had a large format 3d printer and set up my own electroplating station the possibilities would be endless kind of like with welding and just basic metal work if you could 3d print and actually use the functional parts um you're laughing that's it, it, incredible use of the tech and i see this over and over lately uh turbine engine lately on a bunch of different youtube channels guys making functional products in really innovative ways the electroplating that just makes sense it, you could have the core as just a little bit of the strength that you need and then well the smooth outer metal s surface just it just makes sense i love seeing these projects take shape exactly so i'm, I'm hoping in the future to um well that's one of the, one of things we're focusing on we're going to try and get a, a big 3d printer company to sponsor the hacksmith team and hopefully we'll be able to get a fairly large format printer so we can make bigger parts and start really experimenting with this. Very, very cool. Did you want to take another question from the chat? Uh, sure. Let's see. I saw one, uh, I think it was email, Gmail asked, what will you? What feature are you most excited about? Uh, definitely flying. <laughs> <laughs> so to be specific, there's, there's two flight projects that are going to go on. There's the one for the 100,000 subscriber mark which is going to be dangerous, um, not commercially feasible, and it's only going to last about five seconds, but all it'll be a lot the, of fun. All the things that make a YouTube video amazing, right there in a nutshell. <laughs> exactly. And then the other project we're working on, which will actually be used with the suit, is more of a vehicle for the suit. It's not really making the suit fly. It's creating a, a specialized vehicle for the suit, and the form of that will be an octocopter. Really? So we've, we've spec'd out all the parts we need, and the, the very cool, like the very cool thing I'm super excited about is the technology is here. It's just not necessarily accessible, um, or or safe, I guess. <laughs> I <heard laughs> but um, for example, we were able to spec out the parts we need to create an octocopter that could lift a uh, hundred and fifty kilograms and have a runtime of over five minutes. Wow. Um, if, if we succeed in building it, we can break a few world records quite easily. Now, the challenge comes, the cost of those components. You're looking at about $18,000 US for the bill of materials alone. That's so like 18 million Canadian pesos right now. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, we can't do that project unless we get a serious corporate sponsorship, but we do have one in the works, and we're hoping that the sponsorship will be more for more than 18000 enough for us to also actually work on the project because the engineering time alone to build it yeah. you're looking at more of a budget of about 50 grand or 60 grand yeah but luckily we like to work for free so <laughs> how handy uh liam asked have you considered a fully electrical version not sure do you know what that refers um, to um so technically while it is pneumatic, it's still electric at the uh, core. Um, if you mean fully electric as in uh, servo motors, uh, I have, but again, it comes down to cost. Um, even fairly powerful servo motors, you're looking at three to $500 a piece, and even with those, you wouldn't have much strength, um, so you wouldn't really be able to yeah. do much, much impressive lifting with it. So, and you're back to the point, you're not going to have enough of a, a power pack to actually have a runtime that's useful for anything. So for now, until the battery technology advances, um, it's just not very feasible. That seems to be something we're all waiting on just a little bit is for the battery technology to take the next leap. Uh, lithium polymer came along and we were all really happy, but it doesn't have the the quite the quite what we're after for some of these crazy projects. 
I wonder how the the DARPA guys did it with the, I wonder what the runtime on that latest humanoid robot really is. I wonder if it's pretty much only what we see on camera and that's it. It's it's quite possible. <laughs> I, if I was to bet money, I'd say it's not more than a minute or two personally, but who knows? Maybe they maybe they have some nuclear on board stuff. That's what you need. Nuclear. <laughs> Uh, Charlie asked a very interesting, probably a little, uh, we'll, we'll throw it out there. Uh, what is the point of the exoskeleton? So exoskeletons can have, um, a lot of application. Basically, uh, the biggest I can see is, um, for construction and, um, it's going to be a very interesting role between robotics and exoskeletons because there's the people in the camp who think robotics could maybe take over the world and in that case yeah we're looking at Skynet and stuff like that but if we go the other route where we make um, mechanical exoskeletons for people to wear then you're not really uh, at risk of Skynet right? (laughs) Very true. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out over the next decade or so <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone asked if you have an email that you respond to what's the best way for people to get a hold of you on social or otherwise so if you go through to my website thehacksmith.ca there is a contact me form and that comes to my personal email so that is linked directly in the description below to this video you can go right to uh, the hacksmith website very cool I think we're somewhat caught up. Guys, throw your questions in the chat before we wind down if you have anything else for the Hacksmith. While well, you've got him cornered and live, this is the time. Last uh, last time I saw you on video, other than your YouTube channel, was on uh, with Zaya Tong on, I think it was the Daily Planet coverage, and I, I was... I was just blown away to see someone from the Maker community, community really hit what we consider mainstream media around here these are these are big networks and big shows yeah so we actually we have another few things potentially cooking um we've actually been contacted by i think we've hit maybe eight or nine tv production companies now and they've all been somewhat interested in potentially basing a tv show around what i'm doing um Nothing's firmed up, but there's a few which are going through some preliminary planning stages and might come to something. Very cool. You must have a a very busy calendar just answering the media calls lately. Yeah, for the uh, week or two after the big test, it was pretty much all I was doing. It was kind of getting annoying, (laughs) but um, any publicity is good publicity, so... I kept on going. <laughs> For sure. There's a, Charlie asked, have you made any profit on your exoskeletons? Um, besides YouTube? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I guess it dep- depends upon your definition of profit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, oh yeah, profit, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking uh, just uh, money, period. Not no. revenue, <laughs> profit. <laughs> I have definitely not broken even on the exoskeletons. I've probably spent, uh, I want to say, probably over $6,000 on parts and components over the past two years. And I definitely haven't made that much from YouTube in the past two years. So uh, not very sustainable at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. Hopefully that. Hopefully you keep on the path and it becomes sustainable. Uh, Scotty said that sounds like a possible RoboCop application. I just, <laughs> it it sure seems like it. Yeah, um, because basically, well, I guess back to the point of uh, um, armor on the exoskeleton. Personal body armor can only do so much, and um, realistically speaking, the next phase of military application anyways is either going to be robotics or powered exoskeletons to allow um, soldiers to have more body armor be able to carry bigger weapons and whatnot so kind of uh, hand in hand with uh, a robocop application 
where you could have someone who could go in and take out 50 terrorists or something because he's fully armored and basically you're looking at a comic book movie at that point absolutely but, uh, the the areas of personal opinion the areas of material handling alone that this could affect just like people factory you name it environment where people are moving materials just amazes me that this could really apply mm-hmm and be instantly applicable into there's i i personally have uh i went through a bit of i had spinal surgery to correct for well 10 years as a mechanic that basically destroyed my spine and i look back and i wonder geez i wonder what uh five years from now will hold for uh, the ability to prevent that with exoskeletons mm-hmm. ben asked how much does the suit weigh um the legs and the power pack are probably sitting around 40 or 50 pounds at the moment, so not too much, actually, and that, again, that was basically the prototype we whipped together in a week, so we can optimize um, the materials used in the legs, like some of it's solid steel. We could get away with uh, some tubular steel, which would uh, reduce the weight dramatically. Um, so there's, basically, once we have the working... Um, mechanical prototype done then we'll be able to focus on reducing the weight and making it more efficient how much of that weight is actually on the wearer though and not directly just transferred right to the ground uh, um so the legs go straight to the ground pretty much the the power pack as it stands right now is kind of like a, a low-hanging backpack that you wear um but if you lock the leg joints it takes the load completely off the user Oops. Very cool. Awesome stuff. Make the suit autonomous, question <laughs> mark. We're a long way from there. Um, that's the reason I didn't really even want to have powered legs, because the challenge in making something powered that can actually walk is a huge design challenge in its, itself. Um, which is why I, I have the, the mechanical joints, so it's basically a locking lower body exoskeleton, and if you want strength, you can you can throw the pneumatic cylinders on and be able to um, lift heavy weights. Liam asked, do you think it's a good design? That's kind of a silly question. Uh, I think he's referring to uh, the Mr. Teslonia uh-huh. exos. Um He's doing some really cool stuff too. His suit is basically all going with a a cable-driven design. So he basically has uh, highly geared motors in a power pack um, transferring the the, the strength of those through a cable pulley system to all the joints, which allow him to um, have huge strength ratios, which which is awesome. Um, The only problem is it ends up being a bit kind of clunky, um, but I'm very excited to see where he goes with that project. How many other people do you know of that are building exos at this point in time? Um, I'd say Mr. Teslonian's the uh, the main other guy I know doing it. Um, there's a few other people working on um, individual components, but it's the only one I've seen that's basically a full body exoskeleton complete, um, other than the the U.S. military and DARPA projects. If a person was interested in getting involved with making an exoskeleton other than hitting you up direct on your website, is there any resources out there that you know of? Uh, I've mostly just been um, trying stuff trial by error, so I haven't actually found any major resources for doing it. Um, I get a lot of messages asking for blueprints of my design and whatnot, and very specific uh, how did you do this and that? And um, to be honest, the amount of information I put in my videos, um, if you if you if you should be building an exoskeleton yourself, you should be able to uh, gather more than enough information from my video to be able to recreate what I've done. Um, just copying my design all straight out, which a few people have done actually. Um, the amount of emails I've gotten from um, engineering students in India. <laughs> the entire design for their capstone project is astounding um and a few have actually done it and they've it's looked identical to my upper body 
just <laughs> recreated for their project. And I was just like, you guys couldn't improve on the design at all? You just, like, it was just a prototype, and I kind of find that funny. I, I laugh because the vast majority of the bulk emails or the Facebook uh, messages I get are from university graduate students in India uh, asking for the same thing. Meanwhile, it's usually asking for stuff that I've already published publicly. <laughs> but uh, it's funny you mention that because it seems to be a very, very uh, common request for projects. Well, <laughs> the, uh, the amount of engineering students in India is probably more than the amount of engineers in Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely so <laughs> yeah it does make sense it's just uh it's funny to hear it's uh those of us making videos we uh often run into the same kind of funny things in the background that most people don't get to see they know very seldom publish comments on my videos me personally these contacts they hit me up via email asking for the info very strange yeah very very cool We'll take, uh, I'm just going to try and wind things down in the next few minutes. Guys, if you have any last questions for the Hacksmith or anything you have to, to share with us, James, fire away. Uh, yeah, uh, if you guys aren't subscribed already, subscribe to my channel. I try and post updates twice a week. And... Um, there's going to be some uh, big projects happening very soon, so uh, it's an exciting time to be following the channel. Absolutely, and the link to to the Hacksmith channel is also in the description directly below this video, guys. Make sure you give them a subscribe if you aren't already. Cool. Really appreciate you joining us tonight, James. Uh, I know you have a really busy schedule and it's tough to fit these sort of things in, especially on a night where you're probably building something, but we appreciate it. No, it's awesome. I'm, uh, I've got a lot to learn and I've been meaning to maybe start doing some live streaming around the shop more often, so I thought this would be a good chance to uh, see what it's like. Absolutely. I think what every, myself, uh, I think I can speak for many people here. We'd love to see some live streams if you would do them. <laughs> well, cheers, sir. Appreciate you joining tonight. I'm going to go ahead and transition to the end of the show, if that's okay with you. Sounds good. Have thank, a good night, guys. Thank you. All right. That was the Hacksmith joining us live from the Hacksmith Industries. Truly appreciate him taking the time to join us. Guys, if you were here from his channel, remember to click a subscribe to, to this channel if you're interested in some of our tech videos here. We don't have any exoskeletons to share, but we have uh, some other interesting projects and hopefully i'll get down uh plan is uh we haven't hashed out any details but i'll get down to uh the hacksmith industries in the upcoming months and maybe do another shop tour and some behind the scenes stuff um last time we got some had some pizza and beer and had a heck of a time i love hanging out in his shop and it's come a long way since last time i was there Truly, truly awesome spot. I wish him all the best as he's branched out uh, full time in this uh, creation mode of Hacksmith Industries. Uh, totally cool. It's very inspiring to see someone who uh, who has gone as far as he has to uh, go ahead and move off into uh, full time engineering as well as content creation and bringing us along on YouTube. Love it. That's what I love sharing here and catch up on the chat real quick thank you steven for putting the link right in the chat awesome awesome stuff all right we're gonna wind things down what have we got for time here we have nine minutes and with any luck i can queue up i'm gonna go uh crazy in depth just a couple of things uh, I, I had a full schedule plan just in case this fell through tonight. And I don't think we'll get to the community content. We'll just go to the from the shop segment and carry it from there. We don't have a lot of time. 
Blam. From the shop this week on this channel, you saw I did a video. This is more for content creators or anyone looking to get into YouTube video making. I did a video on how to sync your audio and video in post production. That is, how to record your voice and the sound for your videos on an off camera microphone, whether you use a cell phone or a digital recorder or a separate computer, and then how to edit that back into your videos. I hope, uh, hope. It was, it was well received truly appreciate the feedback on it and i know it helped a few people uh it was a viewer request uh, i got the vlog out on the mexican trip i'll be honest guys the vlog video this week i had uh, uh quite a bit of coverage where i did voiceovers and talking to the camera but i did it on the beach and i didn't take my good microphone with me i didn't take my dslr and the audio was destroyed due to wind noise so i canned it all and did just kind of a montage it was a, uh, it was well received so thanks guys hopefully you enjoyed it i did a live stream so we're going to be doing some live streams separate from this monday night show they will be intermittent in nature at this point basically if i'm working on code or a project that i can share live i will try to do so this last week it was uh, some final code checking and debugging on my uh, mars rover project and it was really really uh well received I had a few viewers it was totally last minute and we had a lot of fun uh, it was just more or less debugging code so it's kind of like watching paint dry in a way but some people are really interested in such things so i'll try and bring them to you in the future we've got some cool chat going on a little sneak peek coming up so this week being as how it's more or less Pi Day today. The Raspberry Pi 3 was released today and uh, lots of coverage all over the internet. I won't go into the slides, but in honor of that, I'm going to do a Pi video for this Friday. Uh, it will be really basic uh, Pi function uh, that really evaded me for a little while. Look for this coming up on Friday this week. All right. Tech tip of the week on the Pi, of course. I posted this in the G Plus community. Guys, if you're working with Raspberry Pi, you might be interested to know, or you probably might already know, this nifty little rainbow in the right-hand corner if you're using your Pi, uh, well, just about anywhere. Uh, in my case, I'm using it as a streaming media center using Kodi. Uh, this little symbol is actually a low battery alert. I did not know this. It's a low voltage alert to the Pi. Uh, I had no idea where it was coming from and it took a while before I just Googled it. Uh, this functionality is in all the recent Linux builds, uh, particularly Raspbian, I believe has it possibly, I could be wrong on that, but definitely the OpenELEC and the RetroPie images use it. Uh, I was really surprised and when, sure enough, when I put on some voltage measuring equipment onto the Pi, found out the two amp rated wall ward I had, definitely not rated for two amp. The thing was browning out all the time. So I scrapped it and went to a different one, but you can find this in the G plus community. Glitch said the rover is pretty awesome. Made some progress on his using ESP86 as a wireless link. Very cool. I was looking at using the ESP8266 as a wireless bridge for the serial com, and I haven't gone any further on it yet. I'm just using the Bluetooth on mine, and I will be switching that up uh, in the near future. And let's go. Almost time for the end, guys. Some closing thoughts tonight. I wanted to share this. Um, two years ago, I started a project, and it's on the shelf behind me. So I don't need the headphones anymore. I started this Arduino-based cube satellite project and posted it up on YouTube. Multiple different uh, videos on my channel. Uh, Truly, I've been neglecting get that project done and get it moving again. Last update I did was the voice transmission last fall. Today, I got a comment. This was actually on my Arduino live stream that I did last week, and I wanted to share this. 
Can we do that? No, it's going to cut it off. We'll have to do this screen. Uh, new, new commenter I've never seen before posts. I just want to say thanks for inspiring me for astronautical engineering when I first watched your video about the Arduino-based satellite when I was 13 years old. Without knowing anything about electronics, I was instantly inspired. Very cool. So this is two years ago. So inspired, he started building his own ion engine, got into ham radio, and started developing his own hardware. You can find his website here, uh, dsespace.tk. So I went ahead and checked it out. These guys are 15 years old, and they are into now uh, producing uh, electrical systems based on the CubeSat standard. So designing boards that may or may not be used in future Cube satellites. This is exactly why I do what I do here on YouTube. It's comments like these and stories like these that just make me feel just a huge connection with you guys. I wanted to share this and truly express my thanks for situations like this when I get this feedback and and someone says that, yeah, you made a difference or, yeah, you helped me out here. Uh, got me doing something I wouldn't have done. This is exactly why I make YouTube videos. Uh, there's a lot of negative comments we have to deal with as content creators and a little bit of the, the negative side of YouTube, but when we get the positive stuff back, it just makes it all worth it. So you can check out their website and see what they're up to. I wish them all the best. Truly thankful for the feedback from him. And I, I, I'm sure he's going to go places. Really, really cool stuff. All right, guys, one quick look at the chat, and then we are going to call it a night. Truly appreciate you guys joining tonight. Remember, if it's your first time here, please consider clicking that subscribe button or that thumbs up button below if you like this broadcast. Uh, we'll keep them coming to you every week. Awesome stuff, guys. Truly love you guys. You're an amazing crowd. Make this just a hugely pleasant experience. I noticed the chat was awesome tonight. Thank you, moderators, for looking after things. And I, hopefully we didn't need you too much. You guys are amazing. I really value my time with you. I can't wait to see what you guys make next. Please consider uh, sharing it with the world whenever you can. Make a difference in someone else's life whenever you can. No matter how small, it's amazing just sharing pictures out there of what we're working on or ideas or projects truly do make a difference in other people's lives. Wish you all the best this week. I will catch up with you on a video on Friday if we don't do a small live stream before. Thank you for your time tonight and best of luck in all your ventures. Cheers.